Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Meteora Nestled in the northwest corner of Thessaly is a group of ancient monasteries called Meteora. These monasteries line the cliff top and are an almost unbelievable thing to see with your own eyes. They were settled by monks around the 11th century, monks who climbed almost vertical peaks to live as hermits in the wilderness. It wasn't for another 300 years until they began to build these stunning monasteries that still stand today. The monks originally lived in caves and deep hollows in the rock. They came down only on Sundays to have mass, then went back up to their isolated homes. But by the 12th century, a community had formed, and by the 1300s, the monks were busy building one of the most incredible places in the world. The monks felt it was necessary to create such extraordinary buildings in the cliffs to stay safe. The Byzantine Empire was slowly coming to an end after 800 years of uncontested rule. The Turks were expanding, and the monks needed refuge. They built Meteora as a safe haven, somewhere the armies of the Turkish invaders couldn't reach. They grew grapes, corn, and potatoes in the fields below, and then retreated to their monasteries by way of a hook, rope, and net. By the time the 14th century was over, the Grand Meteoran Monastery was the largest community of monks. Their period of prosperity started to diminish in the 16th century. The monasteries began to decline, and soon it was the only place left in this part of Greece where the ancient Hellenic culture was preserved. It was not only populated by monks, but by philosophers and poets as well. Some historians believe that if it weren't for the mountain monasteries, all Hellenic traditions would have died. In 1921, Romania's sovereign queen Marie became the first woman ever to enter the Great Meteoron Monastery, and in World War II, it was heavily bombed, and sadly, many of its treasures were stolen. Number 9. Mystery Viking Hall Archaeologists in Denmark recently unveiled what they believe was once a popular gathering hall during the Viking Age. They found the hall in the far north, near the modern village of Hune. They believe the ruins date to the latter part of the 9th century, although who built the hall and what its purpose was is still unknown. It was about 120 feet long and 30 feet wide. It had 12 massive oak posts holding up its roof. Archaeologist Thomas Knudsen from North Jutland Museums says the hall was much larger than a typical Viking home. This suggests it was a collective gathering space. It even bears a striking resemblance to houses found near the castles of Harold I, also known as Harold Bluetooth. Harold was the king of Denmark between 958 and 985, at the height of the Viking era. As of right now, researchers have only excavated the hall. However, they believe that given more time and resources, they could uncover the bones of a lost Viking settlement. They found a rune stone with a family name engraved on it, which probably means the family was extremely wealthy and powerful, and everything here probably belonged to them. Number 8. House of the Veti In Pompeii, there is a place called House of the Veti. Of course, Pompeii itself is a miracle of endless archaeology. The Roman town was buried under a volcanic eruption 2,000 years ago and perfectly preserved. But within the quiet ruins of this city are individual treasures and unique stories of the people who once lived here. The house of the Veti was a Roman townhouse occupied by Aulus Vetius Conviva and his brother Aulus Vetius Restitutus. Archaeological discoveries inside the house identified them as former slaves. The brothers had somehow shed their bonds of slavery and risen to great prominence within the city. Certain features of the house are even evidence of the mindset of newly rich people in ancient Rome. New money is new money, no matter what time period you lived in. They had strong boxes for storing their valuables, which they placed in their main room so that visitors would be sure to notice them. They also had gaudy paintings of various Roman gods, which they most certainly used as subtle indicators of their enormous wealth. The general decor suggests the brothers came into their money rather quickly. They weren't entirely sure what to do with it, and so they spent it on all the fanciest things they could find. Number 7. Balestrino Ghost Village There are numerous ghost towns slowly falling into ruin in the mountainous parts of Italy. One of these ghost towns is called Balestrino. 
If you were to fly overhead, you would look down and think it was the set of a medieval Hollywood film. But it's a real city from the Middle Ages, one that is deserted and whose past is steeped in mystery. Balestrino was likely founded in the 11th century by the Benedictine Abbey of San Pietro Dei. A pair of great churches were built in the 12th century, constructed in fabulous Gothic style. At the very top of the town was an imposing medieval castle, and throughout the years, the town prospered. Olive farmers lived here, there was a healthy economy, but they couldn't escape the earthquakes. Frequent quakes continued to break buildings, kill people, and intimidate the local population. By the 1860s, most of the people abandoned the city. Then, after several casualties during an earthquake in 1887, even fewer people remained. It wasn't long before the population moved to a new town further down the mountain to avoid certain death. And now for number six. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Casey Luter and Archie Waters. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Number six, Roman temples in the Netherlands. Archaeologists in the Netherlands have come across yet another mysterious ancient place from history. This discovery is unique and was described as special nearly 10 times in the press release from Dutch archaeologists. What they uncovered here in the municipality of Zevenaar is an intact group of Roman temples, along with sacred stones dedicated to gods and goddesses. Researchers appear to have unveiled a lost ritual landscape. Even though monotheistic religions existed here, like Christianity and Judaism, pagans still worshipped the old Roman gods. Even in the 4th century, people here visited outdoor stone temples, shrines open to the sky, and magic rocks to give worship to their vast pantheon of gods and goddesses. The altars were carved statues, reliefs, and huge blocks of stone. Between the 1st and 4th centuries, this particular region of the Netherlands was the front line for the Romans. It's here where the Rhine meets the River Vaal, making a kind of natural border between the Roman Empire and the barbarians beyond. When the Roman Empire fell in the 5th century, most of their buildings were torn down and repurposed. Stone from temples and houses were used to create other buildings, mainly churches. Yet for some bizarre, unknown reason, that didn't happen here. People left the pagan altars alone suggesting there was a cultural preference here to continue worshipping the old gods, even as Christianity spread through Europe. Number 5. Saqqara For around 3,500 years, Saqqara was one of the most important places in ancient Egypt. Kings and queens were buried here for an almost incalculable amount of time. To put it into perspective, the country of Canada has only been around for about 150 years. Saqqara is home to the oldest pyramid in Egypt, along with 10 others. The biggest is called the Step Pyramid of Dozer, and it was built by Imhotep around 2630 BC. It became the central feature for the funerary complex and would stand 200 feet tall over the great necropolis for thousands of years to come. Its age alone makes it one of the oldest monumental stone structures on the planet. Some experts on Egyptian history even believe the Dozer Pyramid was the influence for the Pyramids of Giza that came later. But there's a lot more to Saqqara than just the pyramids. It's also the place where some of the greatest archaeological discoveries in Egypt have been made. Pharaohs from the Old Kingdom have been found buried here. The Mastaba of T is a fabulous example of artwork from the Old Kingdom, and archaeologists recovered a life-size statue of the mysterious Pharaoh T. And finally, the Serapium was the sacred burial site of Egypt's sacred Apis bulls. Number 4. Nova Anglia Archaeologists have been puzzled by a series of ancient towns with unusual names at the edge of what was once the Byzantine Empire. The towns can be found in the Black Sea region, not far from Crimea in Ukraine. They were built around 1,000 years ago and oddly have names that are Anglo-Saxon, such as the village of Londinia. The reason archaeologists have been puzzled is that Anglo-Saxons didn't really have a presence in the Byzantine Empire. Instead, researchers believe the towns were once part of a mysterious and long-forgotten Anglo-Saxon enclave. They lived far from their home in Western Europe and nobody is entirely sure what happened to them. There are a lot of theories about who lived in the town of Londinia and its sister cities. 
Some believe a band of Anglo-Saxon fugitives fled England after being defeated by William the Conqueror at the Battle of Hastings in 1066. The defeated soldiers turned fugitives then marched across Europe and settled in a remote area of Ukraine. You now had a new area called Nova Anglia or New England. But what happened to these castaways is a mystery. Their enclave has been forgotten for centuries, and no one knows if they prospered, integrated into the local community, or simply disappeared. Number 3. Tower of Jericho In 1952, a gigantic stone tower was found at the edge of the biblical city of Jericho. It has been a sore spot for archaeologists ever since. We know when it was built, how tall it was, and much of its history. Yet the truth of the tower still eludes the experts. Let's start with the basics. The Tower of Jericho once stood an incredible 28 feet tall, making it the first skyscraper in the world. 28 feet may not seem like much, but keep in mind the tower was built around 8000 BC. That makes the Tower of Jericho a Neolithic monument and one of the earliest monuments ever sculpted by human hands. It was built during the Stone Age, thousands of years before the events of the Bible, and yet its presence, with the tower found nestled against the remains of the Wall of Jericho, shows how important the city has always been. Jericho has likely been populated since prehistoric times, continuously inhabited for at least 10,000 years. The tower itself was built using stone stacked 30 feet in diameter. Researchers believe it took workers about 30 years to build given how primitive their tools were. But the main thing that continues to evade researchers is the purpose behind the tower. No burials have ever been found, dismissing any chance of it being a tomb. We don't know of any invasions at the time, so it likely wasn't a defensive structure. The best guess researchers have is that it played some kind of astronomical role in a very early community. Computer modeling has shown that on the summer solstice 10,000 years ago, the shadows of a nearby mountain hit the tower and cloaked the town in darkness. Number 2. The Lost Temple of Poseidon Researchers believe they have just discovered an extremely mysterious ancient site in southern Greece. In the Peloponnese region, archaeologists excavated what appears to be a long-lost temple of Poseidon. At first, they thought they had uncovered a small ancient shrine dedicated to the mythological lord of the sea. But as excavation work continued, it became clear the site was much more than a shrine. 2,000 years ago, it was a magnificent temple dedicated to the water god. At least that's what the team of researchers from Mainz University in Germany think. They say the structure is located in a coastal area where an ancient settlement once thrived. That settlement is long gone, buried somewhere under the windswept grass. The residents of the ancient structure, because of their proximity to the sea, likely honored Poseidon. To make sure he didn't smite them with a tsunami, and to ensure a bountiful harvest of fish, they built a great temple in his honor. In fact, it may have even been natural disasters that motivated the locals to build Poseidon his own temple. Poseidon was believed by the ancient Greeks to cause earthquakes and tsunamis. This particular part of Greece is notorious for its extreme wave events and devastating earthquakes. Not understanding the forces of nature, the ancient Greeks blamed their bad luck with disasters on the gods. Archaeologists have only begun to uncover the structure, which measured about 31 feet and was positively enormous. They've already found part of a marble ritual water basin, but are still working to find more artifacts and information. Number 1. Gamsutl Village Gamsutl Village can be found in Dagestan, Russia. Historians believe the town was occupied by a local Khan and his army in ancient times. The site was likely chosen for its height since it has a vantage of the nearby rolling hills and valleys. There is almost nothing left of the fortress or the village today, only hollow ruins 4,500 feet above sea level. The city was built on an almost vertical slope, making it next to impossible to get there even today. There isn't a road nearby, you can't drive to the village, and it's not exactly on most tourist itineraries. You'll be shocked to learn that up until about 40 years ago, people still lived in Gamsutl. It's hard to imagine because none of the buildings have roofs or doors. 
and the houses are all overrun with weeds and plants. But it's true, people lived here in isolation until very recently, and yet no one is entirely sure of the abandoned town's history. It just kind of existed, beginning around 700 years ago. Then it continued to exist in isolation until everyone left in the 21st century. Thanks for watching! Which of these lost places would you love to visit? Let me know in the comments below! And remember to subscribe if you haven't already and come back soon! Bye!